from Representative Nate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, President Trump, thank you for your presentation. I'd like to ask uh, about the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, the two directors, Patrice Kohlers and Angela Davis, are self-described trained Marxists who seek to dismantle and transform the foundational freedoms of American society. Although students should be taught the principles of Marxism and, and other political ideologies, the purpose of education should not be to advance a political cause. Yet numerous departments of BSU have issued statements on the BSU website claiming commitment to this Marxist group and encouraging students to participate in Marxism. Does BSU plan to continue diverting university resources to this Marxist cause and encouraging students to, be, to consume more BLM content? President Trump for a comment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Representative, um, Boise State does not use state funds to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, while we care about all of our students, um, we're not dedicating our dollars to that support. And we're currently in a review of our websites and our engagement with our faculty because what we believe is that the university should be a platform for dialogue. And as you know, sir, to really be a place in which students can learn about these issues, but make choices for themselves. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One more question, please. Uh, please. Thank you. Uh, President Trump, this question is about the budget process. Last year in the budgeting process, this area of the budget, higher education was particularly contentious. Not much has changed. I, I expect similar contention this year. Many Idahoans and legislators are still frustrated with BSU at some of, and some of what they see at other universities. The source of many legis legislators' frustrations is what's happening at BSU. They see the mission of BSU shifting rather dramatically from being, being a premier institution of higher education toward becoming an institution of higher indoctrination or social activism. After last year's budget battle and throughout 2020, instead of tempering its agenda, BSU doubled down. In a year of budget holdbacks and cost containments and furloughs, BSU actually hired new administrators in the Build Forum, which has a dedicated social justice mission. In a year where there was political unrest across the nation directed largely at police forces, BSU joined in by ending its long-standing contract with the Boise Police Department. BSU effectively expelled Big City Coffee from its campus for exercising its free speech and displaying a flag in support of our police. BSU has faculty and admins who unabashedly support Black Lives Matter Marxist agenda, as mentioned before. BSU departments have issued statements on the BSU website claiming commitment. BSU is requiring more courses in social justice, teaching topics like critical race theory and intersectionalism, while reducing required credits in traditional courses like American history and government. This has not gone unnoticed. Many legislators here are even more upset to see the taxpayer dollars spent not for higher education, but at least in part for advancing a social agenda that is contrary to the values of most of Idaho. Taxpayers should not be forced to fund an activist institution that fights against their values and does so to the detriment of its students. The budget for all of higher education last year ran nearly $630 million. That's the third largest spending category in the general fund. The lion's share of this spending is going to BSU. The, the spending for all of Idaho's public universities is rolled into this one budget. Many legislators frustrated with BSU want to defund the social justice agenda by reducing higher education spending. Whether or not you think the legislators are justified in their views is not the question here. The reality is our constituents are upset and want some ac action taken against BSU in particular. Legislators are likewise upset, and especially because of BYU, or sorry, BSU apparently doubling down on its controversial agenda, and they want to do something about it. My question is this, what do you, President Trump, as a leader of BSU, think of separating BSU's budget from the other universities to be decided separately and so that the other universities 
do not get rolled up in the controversy PSU has invited from the legislature. President Trump, if you care to address that again, we want to stick with um, numbers in our JFAC committee, not uh, talk about political stances. Uh, I've encouraged Representative Nate to keep this from a numbers driven perspective and not a political issue. But if you'd like to address this, uh, that would be fine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative, uh, let me first say to you that the university's later focus is on ensuring that our students learn, have an opportunity to explore a broad range of ideas, develop excellent credentials that allow them to lead in the state. Our mission is not one of politics. There may certainly, of course, there are faculty and staff and everyone has a right to their opinions. And the reason the lion's share of the budget that's dedicated to higher ed goes to Boise State is because of the extraordinary number of students that we serve. There has been a great deal of misinformation that has fueled a sense that the university doesn't care about what Idahoans think, and that is simply inaccurate. For example, there has been a persistent narrative that we ended our contract with uh, Boise Police Department. This is factually false. We renewed our contract at a time when there was a great deal of conflict around these issues on the advisement of a committee that worked really hard to determine what was best for our community at this time. We've, in fact, we did testing for Boise PD. I had staff that went down to Boise PD on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. from our public health office to ensure that our police department could be ready to serve. We've been partners with a great, a great number of organizations in our community and our focus always is to serve the state, to serve our students, and to help them graduate with the kinds of credentials that will make an impact on their lives and the state. I have spoken in our Germain committees about my intention to launch a center, which is tentatively entitled the Center for American Thought, that would bring together people from the left and the right to discuss difficult issues and to really model for our students what it means to do that work. And, and I think, we, and we had a series this year um, called Conviction and Conversation in Contested Times that brought together some political leaders from our legislature, mayors, and, and engaged um, folks to talk to one another and talk about how you can maintain deep conviction, but still engage in critical dialogue. So while there have been organizations that have raised a lot of money by arguing that Boise State has a, a political agenda, what we have an agenda of doing is serving our students and serving the state. And I'm happy to share with you any other information individually if you wanna ask specific questions, but I, I wanna assure you that our laser focus is preparing students to lead. Thank you, President Trump. Appreciate those comments. Uh, Representative Nate, if it's a follow-up, please. Uh, yes. Mr. We're, Chairman, we're a budget committee, is, not a political policy committee. Please. Mr. Chairman, understood. The, the follow-up is, I don't think my question was answered. Would President Trump be okay with the BSU budget being decided separately just to avoid any potential collateral damage on other universities' budgets? President Trump, I'm not sure that that's uh, a decision that you would, if you want to respond to that, that's fine. If not, I am fine as well. I know all of our universities and college are together uh, in their budget process. Uh, if, you, if you want to address the comment, that's fine. Uh, any words? Mr. Chairman, thank you so much. Um, Representative, um, what we have right now is an extraordinary collaboration between the universities in the state, one that hasn't existed prior to last year. We're working together extremely effectively, and we recognize that the decision about how to fund our universities is up to the chairs, to this committee, and, and we support the governor's recommendation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, Representative Giddings for a question about the budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. President Trump, it'll be a two-part question. So we'll start with, I've had some veteran students contact me with some concerns about, a, I think it was a graduation requirement um, called the Tunnel of Oppression. I'm curious about the funding source of the Tunnel of Oppression. If maybe you can talk through that a little bit. Um, I know that graduates um, had to go through this tunnel and there were people who were dressed up in veteran uniforms um, doing things that I would call are illegal. And so it was kind of a negative reflection on our veterans. So I would like, I'm curious about the funding source, Mr. Chairman, but with that, when those veterans um, filed a complaint, I'm just curious if the president could elaborate on how BSU handles bias complaints. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. President Trump for a comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative, um, I am not aware of um, funding for that program, but I will certainly respond to you, but it's it's absolutely not a requirement for graduation. I'm puzzled by that. And as the daughter of a veteran, um, I would find anything that debased our veterans and their service to our nation very disturbing indeed. Um, and so I will absolutely be happy to follow up with you um, about that. And and I'm, I think there was a second part to your question, Representative. Uh, I think that she had a follow-up question. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just can you talk through how the university handles those bias complaints? President Trump. Mr. Chairman, Representative, thank you very much for that question. We have a robust process. We have two policies that address bias. Um, one that focuses on the academic unit if a student feels they have experienced bias in the classroom, and one that focuses on any kind of discriminatory behavior anywhere in the university. And both of those policies um, are, are active and operational and permit students and staff, our community members, to bring forward concerns. And we take those concerns very, very seriously. Um, I'd be happy to share those policies with the committee if it so pleases the chair. Thank you, President Trump. Again, uh, I know that circles around policy issues and not uh, specific to the budget, but yet uh, there was that question about how some of those things get funded. I can't imagine a campus your size uh, would be able to control all different kinds of activities without uh, proper attention. And I uh, and as you've spoken, I believe that that's taken care of. Um, any further questions from the committee? I'm seeing none. Uh, President Mr. Trump. Mr. Chairman. Oh, who have I got? Oh, Senator Wardingo King, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, Boise State University is uh, in my backyard, and I, I just want to make sure that uh, President Trump knows how much the issue does for this community and how well respected it is throughout the state. I'm afraid she may leave this room today without knowing that. Thank you, Senator, for those comments. Any other comments, questions? Thank you. Uh, President Trump, thank you for your time this morning and addressing some of these uh, questions. Uh, some specific to the budget, some kind of going around the budget, uh, but yet I felt that uh, we needed to get those comments out in the air. Again, I want to thank you for the good work the university does, uh, specifically in these challenging times. Yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, thank you, Co-Chair. Uh, President, and any closing comments that you would like to make? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank you for all that you do and tell you that Boise State University is deeply committed to serving the state, to ensuring that our students are treated fairly and our community members are treated fairly. We're grateful for the support we've see received from the governor and we will continue to be an innovative 
and career-focused university that helps our students develop the credentials to go out and make an impact on the state. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, President, again for this uh, meeting with us this morning and again for all the good work during these challenging times. I know I've been uh, tough to handle at times, but uh, I know you're moving forward positively. Thank you so much.